humble playhouse. And from the bottom of our hearts, we thank ye much for being here with us. Tonight, in this most hallowed space, the Globe Theatre, in the most wonderful city in the world, London, in the year of our Lord, 1591, we are excited to present to you a brand new play by the greatest living playwright in the English language, Master William Shakespeare! Ye knowest of the Master's earlier works, King Lear, Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, contemptuous drivel. <laughs> Compared to the play that the Master has composed for ye tonight. But how can we perform such a play without a band of many players? <laughs> and so it begins. We shall send our players off into the murky mists of the theater's backstage area. Ah, but wait, stay some of you. Our audience tonight is clearly of a highly intellectual nature. They know the master's work. They understand his instincts. And therefore, we shall test their perspicacity. <laughs> Look ye upon these players, upon this lady in this particular costume. Can ye guess what profession the master Shakespeare would have written for a character such as that here in London in 1591. Just yell it out. Baker. Yeah! <laughs> she is a baker. Cast your eyes upon the gentleman bedecked in gold. Can ye guess what his life ambition is. Butcher. Yes! <laughs> he shoots low. <laughs> his life's ambition is to be a butcher. And cast thine eyes upon that lady there. Can ye guess for what she pines away each night? Candlestick maker. Yeah. <laughs> she pines for a candlestick maker. <laughs> Thank you for providing content. <laughs> yes, my friends. The master Shakespeare was drinking mightily when he wrote. <laughs> Pray sit back and prepare thyself for a drama replete with... A woman who is a baker. A man whose life's ambition is to become a butcher. A woman who pines away for a candlestick maker. <laughs> ah, can ye guess what is the title he gave this play? How about three men in a boat? That's exactly right. <laughs> the play is called, uh, How About Three Men in a Boat? <laughs> <laughs> My friends, sit ye back and enjoy William Shakespeare's brand new play, How About Three Men in a Boat? <laughs> <laughs> Smell the salty air here on the docks. Oh, Father, I do smell the fish. Ah, don't you love it? 
Not particularly. One day all this shall be yours, my good lad, for thou art truly blessed to be the son of a sea captain. And lo, we have waited here in this port during the rainy season, but that should end soon, and we shall be off on our boat, the Merry Tub, <laughs> with our beloved crew in tow. And I have been saving this as a surprise, but I am feeling most ambitioned today as I stare out upon our destiny. I wish thee to lead this next expedition, and I shall serve as thy first mate. <laughs> Father, this be a great honor, thou knowest. However, methinks I be not cut for the life of a seaman. What sayest thou? Thou hast been born on the sea. Thy legs are sea legs. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I see stains upon these trousers dotted red. Tis this an air of livestock I catch? Father, thou hast been to the stables again. Yes! <laughs> it be true, Father, I have gone to the stables, and I have, I have practiced butchery. Go! Oh! I swear, boy, every time I turn my head, thou art away behind my back, playing with thy meat. <laughs> Father, my good God, 
gods, why hast thou cursed me with such rude and impetuous children? Huh. I have decreed it, and I am the captain on these ducks. Thou shalt accompany me to sea when the winds turn, which shall come any day now, and thou shalt serve as the captain of the merry tub. And thou shalt stay here, and make thy candles, and await our return. Now I have spoken. Good day. Well, he shall not have my candlesticks. <laughs> Good sister, thou must know that I do agree since thy inquiry. I think it be great. I knowest that thou do sit in the tub where we do bathe and think thyself a captain many, many a year. I, but how do we convince him? Perchance we defy him. Defy it? I. Think I that the plan that thou hast said, where a gaggle of women should accompany thee. I. Yes, we shall hide ourselves away below deck. Ah, ah, methinks a plan do come to my mind. But mayhaps before this, um, we are to speak with mother. Mm. <laughs> thou art verily true, brother. Well, mother, uh, here she comes. <laughs> oh, my children, methinks you are scheming about something. I've <laughs> your face. Uh, mother, how knowest thee whenever we are scheming? Oh, because your father just walked off like this and into the bedroom, and I wouldn't allow it. He was angry. Thou knowest him. Uh, what mother, thou knowest truly how to, well, either speak beautiful, soft, honey-dipped words to uh, persuade our father to come into your direction. And your direction, dear sweet mother, shall be to allow me to accompany father on the journey. Oh, if my, not have it. Oh, my <laughs> darling daughter, I have taught you well. Manipulating men is my specialty, and your father <laughs> is one that I've got wrapped around my finger. <laughs> yes. I shall take care of this. Women should be allowed to vote. You can cut meat if you want to, too. You can do whatever you want. Well, I shall then go collect some female friends to accompany us on this. Oh, it's a brilliant idea. And I should accompany thee. Let us go, sister. Good morning, mother. I did forget my captain's hat. Oh, oh, my darling. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, my kiss, 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 kiss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my beautiful Sybil. Uh, thou art a morning star to my day. Thou dost make me blush every day when you look upon me with those loving, sweet eyes. Well, I regret most wholeheartedly that I must soon leave thee, but the sea she calls. Oh, and I regret every day that she calls you, as I wish that you would stay back home with me. I but <laughs> thou knowest that I am one of two captains in this port, the other of which I hold a great rivalry toward. And if I am not there to lead these shipments from port to port, well, certainly he will take my place, and our family would be doomed. I couldn't bear to not keep thee in such fineries, thy hair styled as dark as midnight. I just wish to lose myself in it. Oh, yes, yes, darling. Oh, oh please. Leave me. Okay. I will. Now, let's just have a little talk about our children. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> now, our dearest daughter. Oh, hi, Desdemona. Wishes to go on the boat. Oh, aye, she has told me that this very morning. Right. And now, she has made hints about it for quite some time now. Well, now, I don't think I'm going to hint. She's going. <laughs> Sybil! 
Steer me not like a siren toward these rocks with thy beautiful voice. Oh. <laughs> Sybil. She's gone. I care not for these cross winds. They lead me into stormy waters. Oh, good. I'll tell her right now. Oh, that I don't. <laughs> Captain! Oh, my lady. <laughs> as much like this. Yes. 
Did you not hear? No, I, I didn't hear. Should I start again? No. <laughs> <laughs> My lord, my master, my captain, thus ends my tale. Aye, and much like Plunky, twisted and curled was it. Excuse me? Yes, yes sir? I am Lady Gagnon. I come because I have heard the news. And you see, I am newly married. And my husband, Lord Gagnon, was very fond of his pig. And it is with great sadness that I hear of the death to happen to the young man who hath committed the crime. I understand he is your son. I, my lady, my family is most grievously apologetic. Please, let us do anything we can to make amends to thee and thy husband. I am not certain that my husband has a forgiving nature, good sir. But, but know you this, I do feel very terrible. You see, I, I find my husband to be the most unkind man. Oh, dear. Oh, what is this? Oh, a candlestick. Aye, uh, please, take it as a gift. I, I thank thee, good sir. It shall light my way as I find my troubled marriage. Such handiwork. <laughs> oh, good lady, I can tell thou art a kind soul and entreat unto thee. Please, do what thou canst to stay thy husband's hand while we sort this out. I think it best that Lord Gagnon come here himself. Uh, my lady, might I a word with my captain? Stay you, I pray. Wouldst thou excuse us for one moment? <laughs> Bernardo, guess what? See how she doth hold the candle in her hand as if it were some holy instrument. Aye. See how she doth dote and fawn upon it. I, I, I think she would the maker of that candle be much beguiled by, for so its handiwork she does so prize. <laughs> Bernardo, though thou art overly loquacious, thou art at times quite wise. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> Wouldst thou care to meet the artisan who does craft these wonderful conventions? Thou knowest this craftsman. Uh, I do, and she, a craft woman she be, for it is my very own daughter, Desdemona. Ah, Desdemona, Desdemona! See, fairy rights for women! See, fairy rights for women! Oh. Red upon boats! Right, I Mona! Aye. Please, a moment. Hast thou heard the news of thy brother? For uh, he is in manacles at this very moment, and is in trouble, and he may very well end up losing his life for a crime he has committed. This young woman has admired your handiwork. Wouldst thou talk with her? She is the wife of Lord Gagnon, who now holds the life of your brother my firstborn son in his very hands. Uh, good day, dear sweet lady. I beg thee to please uh, pivot thy husband. I need help. 